Good afternoon, everybody. If I might capture your attention. So I think it's going to be a bit noisy here for, uh, for, the, for the duration. So, so bear with me, and hopefully this isn't too loud. Um, and I'm just going to jump right in. It's, ooh, OK. Hmm. I'm not sure how we're going to cope with that. Can, can you turn, up, turn it up? Volume up? Yeah. Do I need to speak louder? Louder? OK. Hope, I'm sorry if some of you are going to have trouble hearing. Uh, I think it's just a condition of, of this room. I'll try and speak loudly, and hopefully it doesn't hurt your ears. So my name is Scott Nazarian, and I'm a creative director with uh, Frog, uh, or as some of you may know, Frog Design. Uh, we actually we dropped the design part a couple of years ago uh, just to kind of streamline the name, uh, because we felt that uh, the we already have kind of that mind share uh, in the market. People know that we're a design firm. But we're also a design and global innovation firm as well. Uh, and as such, we do a lot of global research. Uh, and the method that I want to share with you today um, is uh, a manner of uh, synthesis um, that I hope you'll find useful uh, for decision making um, and, and uh, I should say for creative decision making. Um, and the essence uh, of the method that I want to share um, is really coming from a belief that Frog has and that, that I'm rather impassioned by that with all the, the talk of new and connected cities uh, or connecting old cities, uh, as it were, um, we feel like there's a need for an, a kind of urban design language, right? Uh, and, and an urban design toolkit, OK? And the pieces you see on the table in front of you here, all these, this collection of parts, is, is a beginning proposal for uh, kind of part one of an urban design toolkit. Okay? So I want you to think in your mind that what you're going to be working with here in the next hour or so uh, is really about um, making decisions for the human city, okay? and that this is part of an urban design toolkit. So I want to start just saying a couple things about kind of the, the inception of this and, and why we're doing this. So a big question really I think today in the design world and innovation at large is how do we capture experience, right? Experience is really kind of multivarious and reconciling all the different kinds of spaces uh, that, uh, that, that we have around the globe uh, can be very difficult, it's, it's very complex. And we have to decide what kind of spaces do we want to promote. Uh, like ultimately, and, and what is design and design thinking uh, capable of, of delivering in that regard? Okay, and again, what we're going to do here is is uh, supporting that that notion. So whether it's Sao Paulo or New York or Paris uh, or Hong Kong uh, or Kinshasa, uh, placefulness, right? This sense of place and a, and, a, and a sense of belonging, the things that we design, we want those things to feel like they that, that they are in place. And so how do we make decisions about creating systems that feel part of the place, OK? And as we introduce technology into all of this, we have to really think about the balance between the, the, all the different interfaces that exist, right? The, the city is an interface to humanity, right, and, and, and vice versa. Uh, so the balance between you know, private information and, and, and public viewing and, and privacy and so forth is very important. Getting those things right is important. Again, how do we make decisions about that? And I, I think, and Frog thinks, that this notion of co-creation, we all have to kind of create this together. And I, I know that, that the co-word is a very sort of buzz phrase these days, like co-creation, co-innovation, co-design. Uh, but I think there's something there, because I think we need to co-design the human city together. And from city to city, we need shared tools. And this is one. So there's a lot to, to grasp, as I've been saying. And the elements that you're going to see here um, are really about surfacing the systems in which people inhabit in cities. Okay? All of the different uh, pieces uh, will talk about uh, different aspects of the human city 
And as, as teams at each of these tables, I'm going to ask you to cooperate and collaborate uh, in building a conversation uh, with the pieces you have in front of you. So let's explore the human city. So we call this exercise juxtapose, which uh, in English it means to place pieces adjacent to one another uh, or in, in concert with one another so that perhaps they, they might agree, okay? Or perhaps there's some sort of contrast that's achieved. And this is a tool for urban design. And it's about surfacing relationships. And if you're familiar with mind mapping, then you'll be, I think you'll do just fine in, in this exercise. And I'm sorry I'm moving at a fair clip here. We started a bit late, and I want to be able to actually get some interaction with you guys in here in a second. So let's look at the tools. You have in front of you these wooden pieces, OK? And uh, on one side are printed the sort of categorical uh, areas that you'll be working with. And on the other side, you have a kind of whiteboard material. Um, you'll see some white chips that are kind of turned up on the table. Uh, those are actually whiteboard. You can actually write on those. It's erasable. So you'll be using those in a moment. And you also have a couple of workbooks at each table. And those are reference guides. Uh, I apologize. They're only in English. Uh, but they're reference guides talking about the definitions of each of these chips that you, you may want to look up as you use them, OK? So the chips are people, OK? They're actors that inhabit the system. They're locations, OK? Which is the, the, the cultural stage in which the scenario is being built. The human values. What do people think and feel as they move through the city? Design principles, OK? I know maybe a lot of you maybe aren't designers, but these are principles that designers and architects and engineers might think about in terms of implementing some of the, uh, the systems that we're talking about here. And then finally, um, the, the functional units or components uh, that make up the city, all the different parts, right? Parks and roads uh, and wiring and plumbing and all that sort of thing. What it looks like in action here. So what you're doing is you're going to be engaging in a kind of rapid prototyping okay, of a conversation. And that conversation is going to start with a need. Okay? And where you see this exclamation point here, that's where you're going to begin. And you're going to begin to piece parts together and build a conversation together as a team at each table. And as you grow, right, different opportunities are going to emerge. And you can really deploy the system in one of two ways. You can start with a need, OK? And here I'm going to hold up this chip. Excuse me, guys. So everybody will have a couple of these at the table, right? You're going to start by writing in an essential need that, as a team, you agree on you think you should be tackling for the human city, OK? Conversely, you can start with a solution right, or an end state that you know to be true in the city now. And you can use the system to refine or explore that end state, OK? So it's easiest to start with a need and then build the conversation outward as a group. But you can also start with something you already know to be true, right, that's something that actually exists. And you can use this to kind of deconstruct uh, the, the system that, that is in the world, OK? So, you're going to be using, you'll have erasable uh, pens here, OK, this, at each table. And I can provide you with more, but uh, maybe you want to designate some people to kind of write on the, on, on the chip. Uh, and you're going to write the need or the end state on this. And you're going to place that in the middle of the table. And that's where we're going to begin, OK? So one phenomenon that you're going to see as we move through this exercise is that wherever you start may not be where you end up. Okay? And the interesting symmetry of the hexagon is that as you, as you piece all these things together, it grows. And all of a sudden, there are different focal points. And the conversation will shift. So one of the benefits of this system is that it allows you to actually see the conversation, to see the scenario as a physical object. Okay? This is a physical exercise. It takes the intangible, it takes the intangible uh, um, momentum of having a conversation 
and actually embodies it on the tabletop. Okay? It allows you to see where the conversation is moving. Okay? So, why are we doing this? Um, when you've built this conversation, and I'm, I'm going to step you all through it and get you started in just a second, uh, and then and hopefully the momentum you, you'll take off as you intuit kind of what, what to do. Um, but once you've built this scenario, once you've created this conversation, what I want you to do is step back and kind of look at it from, you know, like stand up and kind of look and look at all the different ideas that you have, all the different ideas that you've and um, write a mission statement, right? What, what does this conversation say, right? From where you started, the, the need or the end state that you put down, how can you then capture that in an initiative, okay? And I want each table to actually generate this, this kind of mission statement, okay? After, you're, after you've gone through the exercise. And if you're really speedy with it, maybe you can do a couple. But I, I feel like we'll have probably time for, for just one, okay? So, lastly, the mindset for this, okay? Um, we want to explore what the components of the experience of the human city are, okay? Um, so, keep your mind open. Um, any juxtaposition of pieces is valid, okay? There, there's, no, there's no wrong juxtaposition, uh, but if you work as teams, you should be able to justify each of the tile placements with each other. It's about process and exploring connections. And critique is welcome. This is an incomplete system. Uh, I, I actually very much favored what Saskia Sassen said yesterday in the plenary, uh, that you know, we are working with an incomplete system. And this is fundamentally an incomplete system. Not every aspect of the human city is represented here. But enough pieces are represented. And the ability to actually customize, right? You can actually write in new tiles if you, if you choose. Uh, is, is there, right? So you, you can make it complete yourself. OK, so um, we're going to create a, a mission statement at the end of this. And just, just so you can kind of visualize it here, th this is the sort of thing that happens as you build the conversation. You, you begin with something in the middle here, OK, that, that the need or the end state. And the conversation, the themes will grow from that. And this is the sheet that is for capturing that mission, OK? And this is an end state of what uh, your, the end product of your workshop uh, might look like, where you're, you kind of do an assessment of, of the conversation and the tiles and all the different content there and what those meant thematically. And then you'll write the statement here at the end. OK. Are we ready to begin? More or less, you kind of understand what's going on. I think as we move forward, I think it'll become much clearer in actually engaging the, the workshop system. Okay. And for those people who are sitting at the tables without game pieces, um, if you can either come in and, and move in and participate with the other tables. Um, I apologize, there were only seven systems here to place. So if, if you want, um, you can bring your chairs and crowd around the other tables, or you can stand however you wish. So start with the white tile in the middle, OK? As a team, why don't you all figure out what's the need you want to address? And there are some, some suggestions in the workbook. Yes. I live in Seattle. Hmm? Yeah, it's, it's very manageable, yes. Indeed. One of uh, 30. Yeah. A across the whole company of 600. Yeah. So is there a panel to you in Palo Alto? Actually, in San Francisco? Yes. No, we moved from Palo Alto a couple of years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe some of the cities are defined in the booklet here, so if you have questions about. Any city you want. Yes. You start by writing a need on the white uh, tablet here. Okay. Well, those tiles are actually open. Yeah, those are blanks. Okay. Yeah. 
That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what time will that be? Uh, it's going to be at... It's supposed to finish at 5.15. 515. 5.15? Okay. All right. A happy city. Excellent. Yes.